Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that's worth an alleluia as well. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for St Peter's Walsall Worship Online. We're all over the place in our different homes, but we're united in praise of our wonderful God. And in our time together this morning, we're going to sing some worship songs that we know and love. We're going to pray together. We're going to hear from Tim Swain, who's recorded a really good message for us. And then we're going to spend some quality God time. We're going to share communion uh, and just remember and step into everything that Jesus has done and won for us. So well done for getting here. And um, let's pray. Get our hearts and minds ready to worship right now. Jesus said to pray to God to forgive us just as we're also forgiving other people as well. So just to get ready to worship, let's come to God with anything that's on our conscience. He doesn't want to condemn us. He wants to forgive us and heal us. Let's remember and just name before him things we want to be forgiven of and healed of. And as we do that, let's remember those who've hurt us in different ways as well and extend that forgiveness to them too so that we're no longer entrapped in, in bitterness and unhappiness. A moment of quiet to do that. Then we can say a prayer together and then we can receive the forgiveness and the healing that God has won for us in Jesus. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips, to speak your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus, thank you for being our rescuer. Thank you that you've saved us and freed us from fear and you've made us sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. Thank you for the new life and the new hope we have in you. Would the same power that raised you from the dead be at work in us to give us life which gives you back your glory and your praise now and forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're learning to do church in so many different ways at the moment under lockdown. And I thought it might be worth just taking a look at the different options that there are available to you, especially online, but also, as we'll see, some of the offline options as well. So just to make sure you know how to know what's going on, take a look at this. To catch up on services and events and recordings that you may have missed, go to youtube.com and look for, do a search for St. Peter's Walsall and the St. Peter's Walsall channel will come up and you'll be able to see all kinds of things. We've arranged things according to service type and special recordings that we've done. Um, it's all there for you to look back at, to review, look at again, whatever you want. There's also a video from a couple of years ago um, about the church plant to St. Peter's, that story. Not everyone has seen that. It hasn't been on YouTube before, but it is now. So that might be worth a look as well. Um, there's a YouTube channel for Eden Walsall as well. Lots of things on there, especially with kids and younger people in mind. If you want to do breakthrough online with your kids or recommend it to neighbours and friends, Go to the Eden Walsall YouTube channel. You'll see a lot of the videos there. We've been reading through C.S. Lewis Narnia books as well. We've read through The Magician's Nephew, which was it's a wonderful book and is well worth reading and listening to. So if some bedtime listening reading is your thing, especially kids who might not get read to very often, um, listen to the readings of The Magician's Nephew there. So YouTube is one place to go for lots of things to engage with. Facebook, of course, is another. There's a St. Peter's Walsall Facebook page, lots of events and comments going on there. There's also one for Eden Walsall as well. 
these are the places to go if you want to see videos and join in with activities and uh, pass a few comments and say hello to people. Facebook is there as well. There's also the church website, stpeterswalsall.org. There's a link up to a lot of the services. The video is now center screen. Uh, the latest video is normally there. Lots of other information about the church too. Another thing that plenty of us have joined in with is something called Zoom. Zoom is kind of like video conferencing, video meeting software, and it's a really good chance to see some familiar faces and hear some familiar voices. Um, all kinds of things go on on Zoom. There's a Sunday night quiz. We do coffee time after church, and um, it's free to join. So just go to zoom.us if you haven't already. Join in um, with the Zoom meetings that we run. I don't think you'll regret it. It is very useful and helpful. There's also the church email list. Most of you watching this will be on this, but is there a chance that some of you aren't or you know someone who isn't? From the email list, there are regular updates telling you when there's something new worth having a look at. It comes out maybe five or six times a week, depending on the things that are happening. If you're not on that list already, or you want to suggest to someone else that they go on the list, send an email or get someone to send an email to info at stpeterswalsall.org. It may be a really good way of getting family and friends and neighbours involved in church stuff. If you've recommended things to them, you can say, well, email this address, get put on their mailing list, and you'll get updates as to what's happening and what's going on. Now, all this is really good stuff. It's really good stuff if you have an internet connection. There are, as we're aware, some of us, some of the older ones who don't have internet connections and they've been missing out on all these things that we're taking for granted now. I'm glad to say today that um, we have found a way to involve them and it's quite an interesting way. Many of you will know Frank Gidlow. Frank is getting on a bit now. We think he's about 140, 150. Um, it was Frank who inspired us with an idea for the non-internet folk among us. Frank is partially sighted, um, but he was given a small machine like the one you can see. A few years ago, he was given this, and um, it reads the news, and it, it plays all kinds of things out loud for him to hear. And uh, all that you need is the small box that you can see and a small USB stick, you, you stick the stick in the slot, you turn on the machine uh, and it starts playing. It's worked really, really well for Frank and um, we thought it might be a good idea to get hold of a few more and distribute them to, to people who can't do the internet. Um, some of you will know we're part of the HTB, Holy Trinity Brompton network of churches. HTB is responsible for things like the Alpha Course and the network does things like church planting in the way that we've done it. Um, and they gave us a gift of a few hundred pounds to reach out in new and necessary ways at the time we find ourselves in. And we thought this is a really good thing to spend that on. So earlier, I had the great job of going around and delivering a machine and a USB stick to six people that we know haven't got internet access. Um, I should also tell you that I did, of course, take all the necessary precautions. Um, I cleaned the boxes, I sanitized my hands before and during and after each visit, and I kept the recommended distance uh, while I was delivering as, as far as possible. So um, it was lovely to see a lot of people, and uh, I got one or two of them to give you a wave and say hello. Hello. <laughs> Missing you too. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Nice to see you. Say well done. Cheese. <laughs> Thank you. For my box. <laughs> And as well as Nancy and Doreen and Janet, we also got a box out to Maureen Swain and Ron Chambers and John McNally. If you guys are listening, hello, welcome. It is so good to think that you are joining everyone else now in our services, at least by, uh, by hearing them, if not by seeing them. Now, if you know anyone else who could keep in touch this way, um, please let us know. And of course, there's one more technological wonder that we want as many of you as possible to keep on using that wonder is, of course, the telephone. Ring as many people as you can just to say hello, just to say, how are you doing? 
uh, and just to find out if anyone needs help because there are a lot of us who really would appreciate the chance to help anyone who needs it. Um, and if you're a younger viewer, what you can see on the screen, the, these really are phones. Your phone is probably different and mine is too, and that's great. The important thing is to phone and text. Um, but if you, if, you, if you do have a phone like one of these shown, uh, please send a picture. We can start, uh, to, we can start an online museum of um, interesting phones. So thank you, God, for technology. And thank you for the connections that help us to keep and to make in these difficult days. Lord, teach us to make the most of technology for you and your kingdom. Amen. And thank you, everyone. Well done for watching and engaging and worshipping in this way and staying in touch with each other. It's been brilliant. Keep it up. We need to make the most of the technology that we have, that's for sure. And we also need to make the most of the access we have to God's presence, to God's heart. And so we're going to spend some time asking God for our requests right now. We're encouraged by God to reach out in prayer to him. There's this famous verse in Philippians 4 which says, God is readily available, he's at hand, and we don't have to be anxious about anything. Rather, we just have to trustingly bring things to him in prayer, by prayer and supplication. Supplication is just asking. We are to let our request be made known to God with thanksgiving, acknowledging what he's already done for us and how well disposed he is towards us. So we're going to pray into some big and important things. I'll leave some spaces in which you can speak out your own prayers. And um, let's do that now. We'll pray first for the church. That, of course, means our own church, St. Peter's. Pray that we'll be united, even though we're separated. That we'll grow deeper in our faith and trust in Jesus. We can pray that for all the Walsall churches. We can pray for the Church of England nationally, holding things together on a national level. And right around the world, let's pray that the church is a beacon of integrity and honesty and love and power, a sign of the kingdom that is coming um, right around the world. Let's pray for the church. Next, let's pray for our society and the world around us. We need to pray for the NHS. We need to pray for everyone who works there, that they'll be protected, that they'll have stamina arising out of good rest. And um, there are lots of other people who are keeping their country going as well. Let's pray for everyone at work. Lorry drivers, bus drivers, shopkeepers who are still working and still sometimes putting themselves in a bit of danger. Uh, for the benefit of our society. Let's pray for national government and let's pray for struggling businesses. People are not sure what the future holds. Um, just pray for them to hold things together now and in the future. Now let's focus in on our own community. Walsall Council have limited resources. Um, we need to pray for them, everyone who works there, all our elected councillors, that they may be able to keep Walsall running well. Uh, let's think of our own hospitals as well, especially the manor. You might want to pray for some of the others you know, like new cross or the qe or whatever let's pray for social support as well at a difficult time that the right resources will reach people who are affected by domestic 
abuse which is on the rise. Let's pray for an end to domestic abuse and the right help to be available for people when they reach out. Let's pray for our community. Now we can pray for people, specifically people that we, we know and are concerned about. That will be different for all of us, of course, but this is a chance just to name them and lift them up before God. Let's pray for everyone who's affected with the virus. And uh, let's pray for everyone who's sick or unwell in any way, body, mind or spirit. And let's remember those who've been bereaved. Um, people are passing away because of the virus and because of other things too, of course. Let's remember Pam, who lost her dad a week or two ago, and Doreen, who lost a sister to the virus recently as well. Let's pray for people, and people that we know in particular. And finally, let's remember those who've gone before us into glory. It might be much-loved family members or friends. It might be people that have helped us in our faith, uh, people in our own generation or in many generations past. Um, let's remember they're part of the church triumph, and we're struggling down here, fighting away. They're at rest with Jesus, anticipating that wonderful day when Jesus will come back and we will be raised just as he was. Let's remember with gratitude our loved ones and the good things to come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying. You make a difference when you pray. Thank you. I'm delighted that Tim Swain has agreed to speak to us this morning. You might remember Tim came at the carol service and spoke to us then. He came again a month or two later. It's really good to have him back now. Uh, you might also know Christiane Swain, Tim's wife, um, who works tirelessly on the Wednesday morning service. We're grateful to Tim, we're grateful to Christiane too for supporting us and helping in so many ways. I'm just going to hand over to Tim now and let him get on with it. Thank you so much, Tim. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me to join you uh, at St. Peter's today. We're living in strange times. I hope you're all well uh, under this period of, of lockdown and pray that the Lord will give you the courage and strength that you need. We're in the fourth week of lockdown now and I think in many ways it's quite normal to think about possible ways that this might end. And I think some people have been thinking what they might want to do when uh, this is all over, what, what's the first thing that they are going to uh, do with the, the freedoms that we will enjoy once again? 
but perhaps it's even more important to think what we are going to be when this is all over, how we are going to have been changed, how this experience will have transformed us. And that's what I'd like to consider with you a little bit today as we uh, come to the passage at the end of John's Gospel, John chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. And if you haven't already read that passage, perhaps it would be a good idea to uh, pause this video and go and read it uh, now for yourself. Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came into the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Okay, welcome back. So, um, in some ways, this uh, passage describes something that all of us might want to do when lockdown is all over, and that is get together with some friends and have a meal. Because in one way, this is describing a, a barbecue on the beach. That sounds good, doesn't it? But I think if we look more closely at this passage, uh, it also talks about how we might be after uh, lockdown, how we might be transformed, how we might be renewed in who we are and so I want to consider three things with you uh, this morning afterwards a new purpose that's number one afterwards a new partnership that's number two and afterwards a new power that's number three so we've got three things to consider together from God's word, from this passage in John's gospel. So let's uh, dive straight in. And I'm going to just reread the first section uh, for us. So that's John chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, 
Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net of fish because of the large number. So, when lockdown is all over, is it all going to go back to exactly how it was before? In a way, that's how it seems with the disciples in this, this passage. They go back to their life as fishermen. Maybe it was just difficult for them to unlearn things that have become a habit. Old habits die hard. And Peter is just keen to get on with his life and slip back into the old ways, taking others with him. What about all the experiences that he'd had with Jesus over the previous three years? Did, did they count for nothing? What about us when lockdown comes to an end? Are we going to go back just to how things were before? Or are we going to value things differently? Are we going to have new perspectives and new purpose so that people become more important, our relationships and the way we rely and, and value each other? Jesus has new purpose for his disciples. He doesn't want them to just go back to being fishermen. He meets them where they are. He meets them on the shore while they're in the boat, in their normal daily circumstances. But he wants them to do things differently. Throw the net down on the right side of the boat. And there's a huge catch. What's the deal? What's the new purpose in their life? Well, first thing, they have to listen to Jesus' voice. They've been working all night and they, they were the professionals. They knew what they were about as fishermen, but they listened to Jesus on the shore and they did throw their nets down on the right side of the boat. How about us? How do we listen to Jesus' voice? Perhaps by being attentive to him, to really making every effort to listen to him when we pray and learning to recognize the prompting that he gives us in our hearts and minds and to be obedient to it. Perhaps it also means being absolutely determined to spend time listening to his voice as we read the Bible. And our new purpose doesn't necessarily mean a change in our circumstances. Jesus can make the transformation happen where we are if we listen to him. I wonder as the disciples were hauling back in that huge catch, whether they remembered that message from Jesus from three years ago. I will make you fishers of men. Yes, let's remember when lockdown comes to an end that Jesus Christ, our King, 
has a new purpose for us, a new purpose of love and grace to other people that gives them their true value, that shows the love of God to the people that we rub shoulders with every day. Number two, a new partnership. Are we going to be left to fend for ourselves in all this? Well, let's read the next uh, few verses from verse seven to, let's go down to verse 11. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he'd taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, but they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw, what did they see? Uh, they saw a fire of burning coals with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Okay. So my question is, uh, are we going to be left to fend for ourselves after lockdown? And the answer from this passage is, no, we're not. Uh, Jesus has got everything sorted. What did the disciples really need after a night's hard work? Well, warmth and food. And it's laid on. Jesus has laid it on for them. He provides for us. He gives us our daily bread. He is the one who gives us our homes and our, our, our warmth and our food. And we should always be grateful for that. But Jesus is also modelling the joy of giving. He has got this barbecue ready on the beach for his disciples at the end of their working day. He came, after all, not to be served, but to serve. And I think we need to think, after lockdown, how we can provide food and warmth for those around us, both literal stuff, literal food, literal warmth, and also that, that, that spiritual concern, that nourishment, that care for other people. But I talked uh, about a new partnership and look especially at what it says in verse 10. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have caught. This is amazing, isn't it? That we can be involved in God's work. That he is calling us to work together with him. Jesus doesn't just say to the disciples, here you are, I've, I've got this for you. He says, bring some of what you have. Bring your fish to the barbecue and he says the same to us he wants us to be involved in the work of his kingdom to be in partnership with him in showing that love and warmth and nourishment for others we need to be aware of this as we pray our prayers shouldn't be just asking God to bless so-and-so and, and then sit back and do nothing. What are we going to do? What fish are we going to bring to the table, to the barbecue? You know, when we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done, we need to think that Christ the King has called us to partner him in the work of bringing that kingdom about, in the work of doing God's will. 
bring some of the fish that you have caught, said Jesus, inviting us in to a new partnership with him. Let's remember that when lockdown ends. The third thing I said we'd look at is afterwards a new power. So let's just read the last bit of the passage one more time. So I'm picking up at verse 11. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. How are we going to make sure that this new purpose and this new partnership function properly, that they're real, that they, they have this mm, reality in our lives? Well, Jesus promises new power. How's that, you may ask? Well, let me just ask you for a moment. When was the last time that Jesus gave out bread and fish? Yeah, yeah. It was in the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Do you remember that? When Jesus sort of said, you give them something to eat to the disciples. And they couldn't really. And eventually they found a lad with five little loaves and two fish. And but they came face to face with their own inadequacy and found that with Jesus there to take and break the bread and bless it and give it out, there was more than enough. And on that occasion, they were starting with two fish. This occasion, they're starting with 153 fish. And so they're being reminded, aren't they, that, that with Jesus, with that power that he has, that comes in the form of a sacrifice, of a, a, a taking and a breaking, and a blessing and a giving that there is power to feed those who are in need. So as we think for the, about the period after the lockdown, we need to remember that Jesus has the power to do more than we can ever ask or imagine. But finally, as I close, perhaps, just perhaps, it isn't about after lockdown at all. The passage begins with the word afterwards, doesn't it? But it's not talking about COVID-19. How could it be? It's after Easter. After Easter that this new purpose, this new partnership, this new power are all possible. So perhaps we shouldn't be thinking so much about what we want to do, what we want to be when the lockdown eventually comes to an end, but what we want to do, what we want to be, now that Easter has come. I heard on the radio a couple of weeks ago, a man called Peter Hennessy, who's a historian, talking about the importance of COVID-19 and saying it was like BC and AC, before COVID, before coronavirus, and after coronavirus. I can understand that. COVID may prove to be the beginning of a really big shift in our country and in the world as a whole. But 
but we know that Easter was a hugely bigger shift. And right at the end, when Jesus is breaking the bread and the fish, I wonder whether they thought at all about the last time that Jesus had broken bread with them, not with fish on this occasion, and saying, this is my body that is broken for you. It is that sacrifice that changes everything. Jesus' body broken for us. Jesus' blood shed for us, for our sins. Him taking the punishment for our failure so that we can be right with God. It's that that gives us access into a renewed relationship with God our Father through Jesus Christ. Gives us a new purpose in life, a new partnership with God in announcing his love, his warmth, his food, his care for humanity and a new power for us. As John says in verse 14, this is the third occasion that Jesus appeared to his disciples after what? After lockdown? Well, yeah, yes, in a sense, after he'd been locked down in the tomb and after he was raised from the dead. And the deepest reality, the deepest joy of our Christian faith, of being a follower of Jesus, is that we are raised with him. Death is death. Christ has won. Love has conquered. And that love has given us a new purpose, a new power a new partnership after lockdown, after Jesus was raised from the dead. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you raised Jesus from the dead to a new life, to a new day, to the establishment of your kingdom. Thank you that you have invited us to join with you. You've given us a new purpose. You've invited us into a new partnership. And you have given us new power through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you and praise you together in his name. Amen. Amen. with
spirit who clothes faith with certainty. Thank you, Tim, so much for bringing us a, a powerful and encouraging word this morning. What we're going to do next is recreate a meal with Jesus for ourselves. I'm going to pray the prayers for Holy Communion here, and I invite you to take part in, in that as well. Um, we can't meet and share communion in the normal way, but we can still take hold of Jesus with us and in us and know the spiritual reality of that and I hope you will do that now if you want some bread and wine to do that that's fine when Jesus was raised he walked into a room one of the first times he saw his disciples again he walked into the room and just said peace be with you and that's what I'm going to say to you now as we get ready to share communion and meet with Jesus again and I encourage you as we do that just to remember the people and the friends that you can't see right now that you know and love and you would normally bless and greet on a Sunday morning. Just say a quick prayer of peace for each one of them and then we'll pray some communion prayers together. May the peace of the risen Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ. Make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people. In your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth. Heal the sick. Let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
This is the reality of life, that God always has been with us, he always is with us, and he always will be with us. Maybe this week you can recreate a few more meals with Jesus. Just take the time to sit in a calm and quiet way in his presence, learning to hear his voice and his encouragement and his wisdom and his guidance and direction, getting ready not just for the end of lockdown, but for the end of the broken world and the breaking out of his kingdom. That's what we long for and pray for. And knowing Jesus is key to that. So I wish you some memorable times with Jesus over the days ahead. We're going to bring this service to a close. And as soon as we have, as soon as we've sung our last worship song, um, I encourage you just to go over to Zoom and join in the meeting. You should have had notification via email about that. Um, just to hang out with a few friends and hear some familiar voices and catch up a bit. That is a wonderful thing to do. Before we do that and sing this, this last song, I just want to end with some prayers of blessing over you. What blessing means is God's goodwill and favour um, working in you. Uh, I'm just going to say a prayer which helps you to receive that. Open your heart and mind to receive God's blessing again now. Let's pray. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he lift up the light of his face with joy and delight on you and give you peace and hope and joy now and forever. That is the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit with us now and forever. Amen.